वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स अगेन टू माय चैनल जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग कंसल्टेंसी टिप्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द सब्जेक्ट टॉपिक कंप्रेसिबिलिटी एंड कंसोलेशन ऑफ सॉइल दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर 21 बट एक्चुअली द 24th इन द सीरीज आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड विद यू ऑल अबाउट द मोड्स ऑफ सॉइल फेलियर after that this is also very necessary to understand <coughs> because whatsoever structure be designed for your technical engineering purposes that is for recommending the bearing capacity we have to check the bearing capacity from shear criteria as well as necessarily with the settlement criteria ultimately the settlement criteria is the governing criteria for each of those structures now how this settlement occurs in the soil so the characteristic property of the soil compressibility and consolidation comes to the fore now when we build structures on the soils all the structure of the load that very load is transferred to the subsoil through the foundations and what actually happens after that due to the upward force the effect of the loads being transferred to the foundation and ultimately to the subsoil in the influence zone rather to say ki aapka jo effect of loads transfer hota hai that extends to 1 to 1.5 to 2 times and even to 4 times the width of the proposed foundation so what happens after this load has been transferred to the foundation your soil compresses due to the imposed stresses that is due to the imposed loads which results in compression of the soil how this compression occurs is it actually results in that decrease in the volume of the soil mass which in turn creates some settlement of the foundation what is important now is to keep this settlement within the tolerable permissible limits which i have already discussed with the people in few of my previous lectures that this limit is being governed by is 1904 1986 and we do calculate the bearing capacity from is 6403 that is we have to limit this settlement within the safe permissible limit in order so that the building for which very purpose it has been built is able to serve the purpose during its life time therefore the settlement is the compression of the soil layer due to load applied now how this compression is caused this is caused by deformation of soil particles that is the soil particles deform into their configuration because of the superimposed load and they may relocate number 2 is the relocation of the soil particles what does relocation means if when the load is being put on the top to the foundations air and water in the voids is being expelled out that is why this relocation of soil particles and number 3 number third reason of the compression is the expulsion of water and air from voids that is compression is caused by deformation or relocation of soil particles or by expulsion of water and air from its voids now settlement soil settlement is of three types it is immediate or elastic settlement primary settlement or secondary settlement primary and secondary settlements are the consolidation settlements what is immediate or elastic settlement is that it is caused by elastic deformation of dry moist or saturated soil without change in the moisture content 
what need to be noted is that this immediate settlement occurs without change in its moisture content. Now, what is, and this is being represented as SE or SI somewhere. What is primary consolidation settlement? This is rather to say this occurs due to volume change in saturated corrosive soils as a result of expulsion of water from the walls. Now, finally, the secondary consolidation settlement is the result of plastic adjustment of soil fabrics and this also occurs in saturated cohesive soils. This primary consolidation settlement is represented by SC and secondary consolidation settlement by SS. So what actually is the total settlement produced after the loads have been imposed upon the respective foundations for any particular structure? is the sum combination of some total of immediate or elastic settlement, consolidation settlement and secondary settlement. However, one major point to note is that in very compressive clay soils, this consolidation settlement that is SC plus SS is much greater than the immediate settlement, much greater. Much greater the immediate Now, in the end what I wish to say is that the coarse grained soils, that is the sandy soils, do not undergo any consolidation settlement because of its high hydraulic conductivity in comparison to clay soils. Instead, coarse grained soils undergo only immediate settlement, which depends upon the SPT values, which depends upon the SPT values, that is the standard penetration test value of that very particular layer where you encounter the sandy soil. Okay. Now, in the end, what I wish to say is the consolidation settlement of cohesive soils, that is the fine grain soils, is actually time dependent, that is after the immediate settlement and the primary consolidation settlement has occurred, secondary consolidation settlement may take a lot many years to complete. That is why this is time dependent also and it depends on the permeability of that very particular cohesive soil. So friends, this is what which I wish to explain in this lecture of mine. Oh, this lecture on the compressibility and consolidation of soil considering this immediate or elastic settlement, primary consolidation settlement, secondary consolidation settlement for coarse grained soils or cohesive soils respectively wherever these settlements are applicable would have been much more clear now to all of you. Keep on subscribing to my channel. Thank you.